Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching Spirit Church on the Encounter TV Network. I'm now finishing up my series on the prophetic. We're going to go all throughout the scripture, and I'm going to show you many different powerful truths concerning the prophetic. I know that this will inform you. I pray that it inspires you. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. So let's get right into this. I wanna first take a look at the different types of prophetic giftings that there are. So there is one prophetic ministry and under that category of the prophetic, there are many different types of prophetic gifts. So number one, let's take a look at the first one, 
the word of knowledge. And this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in verses 7 and 8. The scripture says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, it's not given to this person that they might glorify themselves or that they might receive from this gift themselves. These gifts are are given so that people might minister to others. In verse 8, the scripture says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So the word of knowledge is like what we see in John chapter 4, where Jesus confronts the woman at the well, and he reveals to her details about her lives. I've had experiences with the word of knowledge myself. One time while ministering in a small group setting, the Lord revealed to me to tell a man I see that there's a woman in your life who was recently in a car accident and she drove a silver car. God says the word of the Lord to her is, and then I gave her a very personal word for her life. But it was the word of knowledge, knowing the information about her life that others would not have known other than by divine revelation had they not known her. That was what opened the door to her heart. That was what opened her up to receive the word of the Lord that was ministered to her. So the word of knowledge allows you to see the situation supernaturally. So when I look at an individual, I can look and I can see all of the different things going on in their life. I can look and I can see all of the different aspects, all of the different problems, all of the different circumstances. And that right there is revealed by the word of knowledge. It's when you see the situation or you receive information in a divine way. Now, the knowledge you receive is itself uh, mundane to somebody who doesn't know it. But to the person who's receiving this knowledge, in other words, the fact that you knew their name or you knew their exact situation or you knew what they prayed last night in their bedroom, that right there is what opens them up to receive the prophetic word of the Lord through that gift of the word of knowledge. So that's number one, the word of knowledge that allows you to see the situation. Number two, the word of wisdom. And this doesn't necessarily allow you to see the situation. It does allow you to see the solution. That's also found in the same portion of scripture that we just read, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 8. Now, an example of this might be the daily navigation of a ministry or a business or some task that God has given you to perform. This wisdom, this knowing what to do in each circumstance is itself a prophetic expression. So the word of knowledge, I receive knowledge supernaturally. The word of wisdom is I receive wisdom supernaturally. When I first began the ministry, I was 13 years old. I never went to business school. I never studied media. I didn't know the ins and outs of broadcast and communication. It was the Holy Spirit who gave me the wisdom for each and every circumstance that he wanted me to understand. This reminds me of Solomon in the book of Proverbs. The, the, the man was full of divine wisdom. This reminds me of Joseph and his solutions that he gave. Remember, Joseph was not only able to give wisdom, he was also able to interpret dreams. So it was another prophetic expression there. But here we see the word of wisdom. And the word of wisdom, I believe, is what's applied when interpreting somebody's dream and interpreting a spiritual meaning behind a vision. So number one, the word of knowledge, you see the situation. Number two, the word of wisdom, you see the solution. Number three, discernment, you see the spirit. And this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, where the scripture says, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. So here, we have to... Um, slow it down just a little bit because I want you to understand that being able to see into the spirit is not the same as being cynical or critical or judgmental or negative about people. Often people say things like, oh, well, I can see things in people that nobody else can see. And really what they're talking about is their own suspicion, their own negativity which is not necessarily always the Holy Spirit. Sure, often God will reveal to you when someone is coming in the wrong spirit or God will expose people who are coming in the wrong spirit. But if you're someone who just walks around and always just is able to see the negative in people, that's not a plus, that's not a gift. That's a flaw in yourself that you really need to work on. If all you ever see is the negative and people are, oh, everyone else thinks that person is a good person, but I see deeper, I see the negative. Of course, everyone has negative inside of them. So this is not at all the application of the spiritual gift known as the discerning of spirits. That is criticism, that's negativity, that's legalism, that's, that's a religious mindset, just looking at everybody judging, and that is also your own suspicion. So be careful to distinguish between the gift of discernment, and your own negative judgments of people. So, number one, the word of knowledge, you see the situation. Number two, the word of wisdom, you see the solution. Number three, discernment, you see the spirit. Number four, 
insight. This is where you see the soul. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, the scripture says, Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. There we read that Jesus knew their thoughts. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 24 and 25 say, But if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your meeting, they will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say. As they listen, their secret thoughts will be exposed and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring, God is truly here among you. So it is possible to see into the thoughts and to see into the souls of men. Now, this does not mean that prophets are mind readers. This does not mean that prophets can always see the hearts of people. This is just one expression of the prophetic where God reveals what's in the soul or in the mind or in the thoughts. So let's recap before I give you the last one here. Number one, the word of knowledge. You see the situation. Number two, the word of wisdom. You see the solution. Number three, discernment. You see the spirit. Number four, insight. You see the soul. And number five is prophecy where you can actually see the future as God reveals it. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. The scripture says, He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Jesus saw into the future. The prophets who foretold of the coming of Christ also themselves saw into the future. So this is one expression of the gift of the prophetic that really does differentiate a true prophet from a false prophet. Anyone can go and gather information on somebody and pretend it's a word of knowledge. People do it through Facebook all the time. Anyone can navigate a situation and say that God gave them wisdom. Anyone can look at someone and say, oh, I called it, I knew they were negative. That's sometimes, again, as I said, someone's suspicion. Now, I'm not saying that none, any of these gifts are um, uh, not something that God wants you to have. Of course, He wants you to have these gifts. And I'm not saying any of these gifts are negative things unto themselves. I'm simply saying that out of all of these, the insight or seeing into the soul, seeing the thoughts in the heart, and seeing into the future are two of the greatest demonstrations of the prophetic power that God has given to His church that, we can, that I can think of. Those two in and of themselves are very powerful persuasions of the power of God. So when someone can see into someone's thoughts or when someone can see into someone's hearts or when someone can see into the future, then they are truly demonstrating the power of God. Now, I'm not saying that the other ones that were mentioned are not the power of God or not demonstrations, but they are lesser expressions. These are higher levels of expressions. When someone can look into the future and declare it with detail and then that comes true, then that prophet is obviously shown to be a true prophet. Now, again, this does not necessarily mean that if you miss a prophetic word that you're therefore a false prophet. In fact, I'll give you some quick references now. I'll throw those up for you here. A wrong prophet is not a false prophet. That's very important to remember. Um, in Acts chapter 20, in Acts chapter 21, you'll see that there are various prophets prophesying and they're saying contradicting things, yet the scripture calls each one of them prophets. So a wrong prophet is not a false prophet. Um, we're under a different dispensation. New covenant prophets uh, sometimes do miss it. And I just gave you the scripture references for that. Um, but I want to focus in here before I close up this lesson on the different ministries of the prophetic. So I gave you the different um, types of the prophetic, but I want, to, I want to show you the different ministries. And there are two of the different ministries, okay? And I want to give you a simple explanation for being able to tell the difference between the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet. Let's go first to the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 says, To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. There we read of the gift of of prophecy. Now here in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul the Apostle is describing gifts that affect the body as a whole. So think about this. In that same chapter, Paul the Apostle describes gifts of healing. And he even asked rhetorically if people have these gifts or if everyone has these gifts. But remember this, there is a gift of healing. Yet the Bible says in Mark chapter 16 that every believer can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. There's the gift of the evangelist in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, yet we're all called 
to evangelize. The same for the teacher. We're all called to know the word and give an answer uh, of a reason for the hope that is within us. We're all called to study, to show ourselves approved, yet not all of us are called to be teachers. What then does this mean? There is a difference between the function in a gift and the specific focus that God has given, a specific grace. So in other words, I'm an evangelist with a teaching gift. God has graced me to win the lost. Now, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an apostle. I'm not a prophet. Those aren't my areas of grace, though at some times the gift of prophecy comes on me. That gift is something that God gives to you as a focus. And the office, I'm going to show you in a moment what that is. So let's go now to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 12, where the scripture says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So again, let me recap here on this point. We have the gift, which is the function or the specific area of grace. All believers can, to some degree, function in all of the gifts because we all have the Holy Spirit. And I think they should be called gifts of the Holy Spirit because they belong to the Holy Spirit. They're not functions that I do. They're functions that the Holy Spirit does through me. So if we all have the same Holy Spirit, it stands to reason that we can all, at some degree, in some way, flow in these different operations. So then, the gift is that special area of grace, that special area of focus. The office is like that in that there's someone who's given this special area of focus or grace, yet the office of the prophet comes with authority and influence. And this really is the only differentiating factor between the gifts and the office. I'm going to give it to you simple. Let's not complicate this. Let's not try to describe, well, a prophet can prophesy this good and someone with the gift of prophecy can prophesy this good. There's no differences in the accuracy because they both come from the Holy Spirit. So what is the major difference? I'm giving it to you now. It's two words, authority and influence. Now, church authority is different than the influence that a believer has in the local church. And again, there's not much of a difference between the gift and the office other than the level of authority. So the authority must first be given by God and it is cultivated by man. God will position you. Read Isaiah chapter 6 when he called Isaiah the prophet as a prophet. And then he told him, go and tell the people who will not listen. Tell them to look and not see, to listen and not hear. In other words, God decided just how far his ministry would go. He decided just how far his influence would reach. So then... The gift of the prophet, the prophet, the office of the prophet is someone who's in Ephesians 4.11, one of those ecclesiastical leaders of the church whom God has grace to lead, to guide, to correct, and to help build and equip the church as a whole as opposed to the individual. So again, the difference between the gift and the office is simply the authority and the influence. Well, that is it for this lesson. Now, I want to pray with you. I hope that as we were going through the scripture today that your hunger for the things of God was stirred. Let me pray with you now and pray that God would guide you as you begin to grow in your spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask you, Lord, to stir up that gift within them. Let it be like fire in their bones, Lord. I pray, Lord, you would stir them and you would cause them to speak forth the oracles of God in the name of Jesus. And I want you to receive it by saying, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, almost 10,000 members now, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. When you sign up, by the way, it's free. You'll receive a weekly email from me with a brand new teaching fresh from heaven just for you and a brand new worship cover or original from Stephen Moctezuma. And the best part, you can always reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Now to your comments. And these comments are from last week, How to Know Your Prophetic, the Three Different Signs, which was a part of our prophetic series. If you haven't seen that yet, I really recommend you go and watch that. Maybe you're someone who's watching this. You're saying, the prophetic ministry sounds awesome, but I don't really know if I'm prophetic. Go and watch that teaching. We cut through the confusion and I give you three clear biblical signs that you are indeed 
prophetic. Go and do that. And while you're at it, be sure to also subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash encounter TV. Like, comment, share, spread the word, and make sure your friends see this content. Now to your comments from last week. Eunice writes, may God continue to increase your ministry and bless you. Thank you for your teaching. Meet Avery says, when I felt that desire for this spiritual gift, I thought instantly you want it for your own glory. I believed it for a second until I heard that verse from Corinthians. Now I know that it's the devil speaking to me that I only want it for my own glory. So Meet Avery got some clarification. They thought originally it was their own flesh that wanted the gift of prophecy. And they found out that was just a lie of the enemy trying to keep them from the gift. And now they're confident that God has given it to them. The next commenter writes, your messages are a blessing to me. You are answering a lot of my questions. Thank you for everything. Blessings from Romania. Well, blessings to you from sunny Southern California. And finally, Sarah W. writes, thank you, Stephen, for singing Give Me Faith. This song actually changed my life a couple months ago. Every time I hear it, I remember how God delivered me out of the depression and confusion I went through. Also, thank you, David, for being so faithful to God. You always inspire me to be better in my spiritual walk. God bless you, your family, and ministry. And we get testimonies like this all the time of people who are being touched by this ministry. In fact, I just met a man. His name was Mr. Swanson. I'll call him because I don't want to give away his first and last name, help protect his privacy. But he said I could share this story publicly. Uh, There's this man by the name of Mr. Swanson who I met while ministering in Northern California. And he came up to me and he told me, Brother David, in 2017, my son passed away. And I became suicidal because I thought life was no longer worth living. And then he says, while flipping through the channels of his television one day, he saw Encounter TV come onto his screen. And he said that ever since then, God has been doing a work in him. His daughter told me he was very stubborn toward the things of God. But now his heart has been softened. God has touched him. And he's got the hope and the joy of the Holy Spirit. He's found purpose in life again, all because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And this truly is the Holy Spirit's channel. This media truly is making a difference. We're seeing lives impacted all around the world. And this is where I need your help. If you'll notice, I don't charge for this content. I don't want to charge for the Word of God. You'll notice we don't charge for our events. We don't want to charge for people to come and hear the gospel. It's just not biblical. What is biblical, however, is the taking of offerings, as Paul did often. And so I'm taking an offering here for the ministry. If you have been blessed by this content, or maybe you've been watching it for some time and you said, eventually I want to support. Well, now is the time. Now we need your support. Be sure you're signed up to our emailing list because I have a major ministry announcement coming up in just a couple weeks. You're not going to want to miss it. And I want you to know that your support is going to help this ministry grow and become stronger and impact more lives. And we're growing month over month, week after week. We're seeing the impact just grow. And, and I know this, that there is an acceleration of growth coming that this ministry has not seen. We have not even scratched the surface. I'll put it that way. So become a supporter. Become a monthly supporter of this ministry. Sign up to give a gift of $30 a month. That's it. $30 a month is easy to do for most people. It's difficult to do for some. So either way, I want you to stretch your faith. Become a supporter for $30 a month. And I'll send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons in Spiritual Warfare. You'll get to choose one gift. I'll sign it for you. We'll send it to you. It will be my thank you as an initiation for you becoming my partner. Now, maybe you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to do the monthly giving. That's fine. Consider a one-time gift into this ministry, $100, $500, $1,000 even. Whatever you give will go to help us win the lost and build the believer through events and media. So support us today. Get behind what God is doing. And I know He'll bless you for it because it promises that in His Word. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.